Hello friends, it is day 26 of my 30 day challenge, December 27th, <clears throat> and I hope you've all had a great uh, weekend of eating, stuffing yourself, <laughs> uh, but it is Sunday night, and uh, I am back for Storytime Sunday, edition 3, Whoosh. and so today, uh, I'd like to share with you a story on healing, as my title suggests. And so, um, just in case you haven't seen my, my first story time, um, let's give you a quick background. Um, I was born in Vietnam, and I came to Canada when I was one year old, and I was a part of a group of people called the Bull People. And essentially, the Bull People were uh, Vietnamese, who at the end of the Vietnam War, um, they fled Vietnam because the communists had won the war. And so my family were one of them and my parents just did not want to live in a communist country. And so they fled. And they risked their lives, including mine, I was two months old. But, you know, what they wanted was, um, they wanted a life, they wanted to be free. To be free, just to say that, wow. I don't know, sometimes, you know, I think people living here or growing up here, they don't really understand uh, the freedoms that we have living in Canada and the opportunities compared to a lot of other countries. And so I'm very grateful to be living in Canada. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, fortunately we made it over and I, I grew up in Langley actually. We landed in Edmonton, uh, lived a couple of years in Vancouver. And then I grew up in Langley starting when I was in grade two. And it was actually a really great, uh, great spot to, to be raised, actually. It was a, a small city, if you will, at the time. <clears throat> and growing up, um, as far as I can remember, you know, there was one passion that I had, and that was sports. Every time I played a sport, and it didn't matter what the sport was, um, it would get my adrenaline going, my testosterone, testosterone, a place for my testosterone to go, and uh, yeah, it just invigorated me, and so so much passion there, and it still is for me, you know. Uh, if it's great for the body, my mind, my soul, my emotions, just everything. And uh, growing up, uh, I, I begged my parents to put me into hockey uh, because there's a couple of friends who who played hockey and and uh, I, I was very envious, <laughs> let's just say that. I was like, oh, I want to play. But my parents at the time said no, because uh, for them, um, they wanted me to just focus on the studies, right? Uh, they, they left Vietnam because they wanted a brighter future for their kids. And I think every, every parent wants a brighter future for their kids, right? A better life than they have for themselves. And for them, success, was basically being a doctor, lawyer, dentist, you know, a professional, right? A respectable profession. That's success uh, in, in the Vietnamese culture anyways. And I'm sure with many Asian cultures actually. As, and my parents are first gen, right? So that's the culture they grew up, that's what they know. And so they would never support any of that. But that's all I really cared about growing up. And so I kind of just put it to the side, okay, fine, you know, they're not going to support me. I can't do anything about it. And so, um, I remember in grade 8, grade 9, I started to play some tennis, and I was pretty good. And so uh, again, I, I asked my parents, hey, you know what, I'm actually pretty good with tennis, uh, playing my buddy Sean, and you know, I would beat Sean like 6 love, 6 one all the time, and then one day he would come and say, hey, I'm top 20 in BC. I'm like, how are you top 20? You suck. <laughs> And, but then he would actually show me the rankings, like, what? Like, if you are top 20, what the heck? And so I would talk to my parents, and of course, um, my parents would be uh, not supportive. And so, and I would beg them. I would grab the paper, I'm like, hey, look, look, look. You know, the top, you know, Andre Agassi, Pete Sanford, I'm dating myself now, right? Look at these guys, they make like over a million a year. And then my parents would say, well, what makes you think you can get there? 
And I was like, what? I'm like, you're my parents. Aren't you supposed to support me and, you know, lift me up? Oh, that was like a dagger in the heart. Um, but I believed in myself. And so I kind of just let it alone. And then I guess my parents kind of rethought it and said, okay, well, if you want to play this tournament, fine. And they let me play. I was ecstatic. I was so pumped. I was like, all right, I'm going to play my first tennis tournament. Woo! And uh, in the summer, I usually didn't get up until the afternoon, like 1 or 2 p.m. And my tournament started at, my first game was 7.45 a.m. So I definitely was not really awake when I went. Um, hey, Shelly. Uh, but um, I played and I lost 6-3, 6-4, which means that I lost a game in each set, right? So I could have went either way, and really, I beat myself um, just doing double faults. But anyways, uh, later on, I found out that was the number one seed, and not like that's the number one seed. <laughs> I wasn't very impressed. Um, hey, Mel. Hey, Camilla. Um, but anyways, you know, after I lost, um, you know, obviously, I was I was disappointed for sure, right? I know I beat myself, and I was pretty, you know, you know, Again, disappointed. So, going back to my family who came out to watch, uh, you know, I was obviously looking for some sympathy. And the first thing I heard was, um, See, we told you so. Uh, I'm like, Again? I'm like, Why do I put my faith in you? Ah, uh, those were piercing words to me. I'm like, Wow, dang. That hurt and I don't know did you ever grow up having a dream that was just you know a passion so important to you and just not have any support because that was me growing up you know my parents they just didn't see sports as a as a viable feature basically right and but that's all I cared about and the thing was I had pretty good grades at school too, and my par my my brothers. I'm the middle child, so I have an older brother and younger brother, and their grades were not that great. Uh, they weren't bad, right? But they weren't like mine, and so my parents basically pegged me as okay, this is going to be our doctor, right? And so they didn't want anything to derail me from that path, and so you know, being wanted to be a good son <clears throat> again, I I kind of pushed my dream aside. And so, uh, I'm fine, right? So I, I'm going up, go to school. Uh, I, I took courses. Uh, I even wrote the MCAT, and I was at a crossroads. And I was like, well, am I, am I really going to go through with this? Because I felt so much pressure. Because my parents, my whole life, have been pegging me as the doctor of the family, right? Because they saw so much potential in me for that. And, you know, uh, I think, in, I know in the Vietnamese culture, well, my family anyways, uh, they would love to be able to have a son that they can see. That's my son, he's a doctor, right? And, you know, when I think about it, it'd be nice to have the, <coughs> the white coat, the stethoscope, you know, the initials behind my name, of course, the respect, and, of course, you know, make some decent money. And so I thought about it, yeah, it's, it's not a bad profession to go into, but... When I was honest with self, that, that was not my dream. That's my parents' dream. And if I went through with it, I know I would resent them for the rest of my life. Because it's 10 plus years of extra schooling, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's a commitment, giving up a lot of you know, social activities, your life basically, right? To, to be a doctor. And so <laughs> at that time, I decided not to go through with it. And I, and I was bracing myself. I was like, oh my gosh, how do I tell my parents? And when I did, the reaction was like, okay, so what are you going to do now? What? What? I'm like, that is not the reaction I thought you were going to give me. I thought they were going to be so disappointed and mad at me. I built up this huge pressure. And... Obviously, my parents are very disappointed, but I'm like, that was not the, what I expected. So anyways, I, I started to pursue 
you know, different paths, right? And personal growth was a huge thing for me because at the time I was trying to figure out, okay, what direction do I go? And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, fast forward a few years later, um, you know, I shared my last post that, you know, my parents got divorced. And so uh, my, my dad stayed in Vietnam most of the time. Uh, he ended up finding another partner and had a child. And so I have a half brother. Um, and, you know, my dad, he would come and stay with me uh, when he was, when he came, when we came back to Canada. And he would stay with me for a number of months to figure out the paperwork because as my brother, half brother, uh, he started to grow up, my dad wanted him to come here for a better education. And so, I remember, you know, you know, just my whole life, you know, growing up, my, I just never felt any support or acceptance from my parents and anything that was actually important to me. And so one, one, one day, my dad was just on me about, you know, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, you have so much potential, and da, 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 and just reaming on me on how I, he thinks I should live my life. And I broke down and I cried and I yelled at him. I'm like, <laughs> you... You never support me in anything that's important to me. And I just bawled. And he stopped condemning me, basically, and judging me. He just stopped because I don't know if he realized how I felt. And, you know, doing, doing the work through personal growth, like, I, I knew my parents wanted the best for me. And they're only doing the best that they know at that time. Right? So logically, I knew that, you know what I'm saying? Emotionally, it was just a little harder. But through personal growth, you know, I, I, I worked through a lot of those emotions. And, um, you know, I just kind of say, you know what? Um, they're from the old country, right? They don't really understand, you know, different things and how, you know, it's a different culture, just say that. Uh, and so, you know, I'm very grateful to be raised in a, in a Vietnamese home to learn a lot of the values and, and traditions and culture and stuff. Uh, but I'm also grateful living in Canada and learning the uh, different values and culture here. Uh, and for me, I just try to take the best of both worlds. And so, you know, um, my younger brother, when he got to about nine years old, I think, eight, he's 12 now. Thanks, Mel. He's eight, uh, around eight or nine. My dad put him into hockey, ice hockey. And I'm like, like, hey, cool. You know, I'm, ha I'm happy that he got the opportunity, right? And, uh, you know, I, I come and drive him sometimes and help him out. And, you know, I love getting around the rink. You know, I still do. Like, just the smell of being at an ice rink is amazing for me. And so, um, you know, I, I remember telling him one day, you know, uh, his name's Robertson. Hey, Robertson, you know, it, it, you should be very grateful that you get to play hockey because I never did at that age, you know? And he says, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I, then I would tell my dad, I'm like, you know what? Like, you know, I'm glad that you're putting into hockey, but man, I, I wish, I wish you had put me into hockey when I was that age. Like, you know, I really had some potential, right? And he said to me, I didn't know about Those words, it was like the heaviest weight that got lifted off my shoulders. And so much healing took place for me. Because again, emotionally, no, sorry, logically, I knew. Logically, you know, like I said, I, I knew they did the best that they could and what they, they thought was the best thing for me. And emotionally, I thought I worked through it, <laughs> through my personal growth programs and so forth. And, uh, but those words were so freeing. Ah, uh, oh, it was, uh, uh, I can't even tell you the feeling. 
I can't even describe it honestly. It was just so free. Because I, I knew that they, they tried, they did their best. And, but it was just so hard for me because that was my dream, right? And so, you know, if you have a dream, <laughs> I say go for it, no matter what anybody says. You know, I'm, I'm a huge encourager to anybody who has a dream, whatever the dream is, you know? And if, if people don't support you, find people who will, because there will be others who will. And, you know, I, I think that's one of the reasons that I'm a huge supporter of anybody who has a dream that uh, willing to share with me. I'm like, you can do it. And people are always surprised by my, my, my encouragement. And uh, now that you know my story, you know why. Because I wish I got that encouragement. I wish I got that support. I wish I had just been accepted by my parents. That me being the son was just, was good enough. I didn't need to do anything. I didn't have to go a certain way. I didn't have to live my life a certain way. I just wish they just accepted me for who I was. Because I knew who I was. <laughs> I knew what was important for me. They just tried to force their reality on what they thought was important and what success was, right? And so again, I get it, right? <sighs> and you know, if you have kids or if you have, uh, thank you, Mel. Appreciate it. Um, you know, if if you have people in your life that they they're willing to share their dream with you, you know, please just at least listen to them. Don't shoot it down <laughs> just because you don't agree with it. You know, we only have one life to live on this earth, and we're all just trying to figure it out, right? And we're all different. No. N doesn't mean that you're right or they're right or you're wrong or they're wrong. It's just we're all on a path, on a journey of self-discovery, my friends, right? And so everything that I've gone through, I'm so grateful. I really am because it's helped shape me who I am today and helped me become the man that I am today. And without those experiences, I'll be a totally different person. And so... You know, I just want to share a story of something that was really important to me and really had a huge part in shaping who I am today and how I try to make my impact in the world. Today, I have a new dream, a different dream, but I'll, I'll save that for another time. Anyway, I, I hope uh, that story helps you. And um, I just want to say I love you all. I hope you have a, a great rest of your weekend and a great uh, end of 2020. I'll see you all tomorrow.